What's going on guys welcome back this video was more targeted to beginners because today i want to show you a core python module called iter tools that is going to make a lot of things that are related to lists and counting and combinatorics uh easier for you you don't have to do them from scratch you can just use this core python module called iter tools to make things easier and simpler to use so for those of you who are new to python or just starting to get more intermediate this might be quite interesting so let us get right into it all right, so let us get started by importing iter tools. As I already mentioned, iter tools is part of the core Python stack, so we don't need to install anything. All we need to do is we need to type import iter tools. In this module, this library provides us with a lot of useful functionality when it comes to collections, when it comes to iterating over collections, as the name already says, iter tools, uh, when it comes to combinatorics and so on. And we're going to start by looking at a quite simple function called the count function, which is similar to a function you might know called range, um, but not quite the same. And the idea is that sometimes in Python, we want to start with uh, i being equal to zero, for example, while true. So basically, in endless loop, we want to print i, and we want to increase uh, i by five, for example, which is the step size. And of course, if we run this, this is going to go on forever. So we have to terminate it here by force. Uh, of course, we can also provide a limit, we can say, okay, if I is equal to 5000, then break. So this works. But then of course, if we do it like that, if we don't want to have an endless loop, we can also just use the range function, we can just say for I in range, starting at zero going up until 5000 with a step size of five print i. So this is not iter tools. This is just basic Python, you probably know this already. Um, but the idea is quite similar, because range actually produces a generator where we can get the next element. And by iterating over it, we get the next element all the time until there is no element anymore. And with iter tools, we can do a similar thing using the count function. So we can say for i in iter tools dot count starting at zero with a step size of five, you can see the maximum is missing because this is a generator, a real generator generating more and more values without a limit. I have a video on generators. If you want to take a look at that, it's part of my advanced Python tutorial series, I think, or of my Python tips and tricks, but I think it's the advanced Python tutorial series. Um, and essentially, I can print your I now and this is going to go on forever. Because the generator constantly produces new elements. And we can see that uh, this works like a generator by um, going ahead and initializing it, let's say counter equals iter tools count zero five. And now if I go ahead and I print next, which is a typical function that you use on generators, uh, we're going to get the next element all the time. So zero, five, 10, 15, 20. And you will not be able to turn this into a list, of course, which is possible with a range because if I have print list range 0 5005. This is just going to turn this into a list with all the elements. If I try to call list on the counter, for example, this is going to be an endless loop because this list does not have as you can see, this is still running here. This list does not have boundaries, it goes on up until infinity. So this can be quite useful if you want to have an infinite counter where you can always get a next element, you don't want to specify a limit. Um, so you want to have a start point and a step size. So 0, 5, 10, 15, and so on, uh, until you don't don't need it anymore. It's never going to be empty, you can use it as long as you want. So this is one thing that iter tools offers. Um, another one is the cycle function, the cycle function is quite interesting. Let's say we have a set of elements. And these elements are, for example, a and then we have uh, 20. And then we have 4.5. And then we have true, maybe just a bunch of values here. And now I want to have a cycle. So I want to use these four elements in that order all the time, I want to iterate, but not only once because of course, I can go ahead and say for i in elements. And then I can print i. Um, but this essentially doesn't happen forever, I cannot do this over and over again, of course, I can do something messy, I think, like doing a while true, which is very, uh, a very bad solution, but I can do that if I want to, a more elegant solution would be to do something like for I in range of length of elements. And then I can just go 
i uh, modulo three, or in this case, four, which is the length of elements, and then I can just increase. Um, actually, this then would have to be. Um, actually, let's do while true. There you go. I plus equals one. And I starts as zero. So this would work, for example. Um, and of course, we don't want to print I we want to print elements. Whatever we get here, there you go. So this would also work, but this is not an elegant solution. And of course, it only works in a while true, it doesn't work by just getting the next element until we don't need one anymore. So if you want to do that professionally with iter tools, you can use a cycle function. The basic idea is to say for I in iter tools dot cycle and we pass the elements. And then we print I like that. So this works like that. And we can also do something like my cycle is going to be iter tools dot cycle elements and then I can just print next off my cycle. And then we get the next element all the time. So we basically go a 24.5 true a 24.5 true and so on and so forth, all the time in a cycle, uh, which can be useful sometimes sometimes we have elements we want to reiterate we want to go in circles all the time. Um, and we, we don't want to have to specify how many times we do that. We also don't want to go in endless loop, we want to use this next to always have uh, the next element. So this allows us to iterate over a collection in a um, cycle way, so to say. So another interesting function is the Cartesian, uh, I, I hope it's pronounced Cartesian Cartesian uh, product, essentially, you have two collections. So let's say we have numbers one and we have the values one, two, three, and let's keep the pep eight conventions here. And then you have four, five, six. And what you want to have now is the product where the, the Cartesian product where essentially you have prod equals and you want to have in this case, like one and four, you want to have two and four, you want to have three and four and one and five and so on and so forth. And you can do that with two loops. So you can just go ahead and say four number or actually four I in numbers one, four J in numbers two. Then you can just print here or not print actually we need to create an empty list prod equals empty list. And then we're going to say prod append a tuple of I and J. And then we can print that. So we can do it like that. But we can also just use iter tools to make things simpler for us. Um, we can just print iter tools dot okay, now I triggered some snippet iter tools dot product, and then we can pass numbers one, numbers two. And of course, in this case, we get this generator here. So we need to turn it into a list to display it. But there you go. This is the exact same result here, you just have to type cast to a list, you have to to trigger the execution because you have this lazy execution, this lazy evaluation where you have the information here, but in order to actually trigger it to make it an actual list, you need to call the list type casting. Um, you, you need to type cast to a list here. But this is also a helpful thing that you can do. Now, I want to show you two more things. The rest, I think this whole module is so interesting, you can you can just go to documentation and try all the minor functions. Um, I think I'm going to show you two more because they're going to be quite interesting for combinatorics. Oftentimes we have elements and we want to know, okay, what kind of uh, permutations we have combinations we have and so on. And for that we have the actual uh, permutation and combination function in iter tools, which is quite useful. So let's say we have elements and now we're going to call them just um, A, B, C, D, and E. And now I want to know, okay, how can I arrange these elements? And of course, we can do that in our brain if we have like, uh, five elements here, but oftentimes we have huge collections, and we still want to uh, have the permutations. So remember, we have when it comes to permutations, we have the length, in this case, five, which is n, uh, n factorial, permutations. And what we can do to calculate those is we can just say print, 
iter tools dot permutations of elements. And what this does is again, we need to type cast into a list to see the result. But what this does is it gives us all the permutations here. So basically, I can have A, B, C, D, E, I can have A, B, C, E, D, I can have A, B, D, C, E, and so on. All the possible orders of these elements are given by the permutations. And if we want to do some calculations on this set here on, on all these permutations, or we want to filter out some of those, we don't have to, to write the algorithm for that manually. We can just use the permutations function of iter tools, and then we get such a collection. Um, same goes with the combinations. The combination idea is the following. I have a collection of A, B, C, D, E. Uh, and let's say I pick three elements, I, I make three picks, which three pick combinations can I make? So for example, let's say I pick a then a is out of the collection. So I picked a now I can also pick D and D is out of the collection as well. And now I pick C. So this would be one combination a D C I picked first a then D then C. Now another one could be I pick E, I pick B, I pick C in order to get all these combinations, I can just go ahead and say elements, um, sorry, actually print iter tools dot combinations of elements. And I need to pass a second parameter here, indicating how many I want to choose. So in this case, we talked about three. And I think I'm going to have to typecast this again into a list. There you go. And here now in the second row, you can see all the possible scenarios, I can go ABC, ABD, ABE, ACD, and so on, and so forth. But those are the combinations uh, where the order doesn't matter. So you can see here that those are all the combinations. But we don't have anything starting with D, for example, because the order is not important. In this case, we just say that um, ABC is the same as CBA, for example, it just matters uh, what kind of choices I made. Now, let's say I want to model a scenario where I have the same the same thing. So I have the same um, elements. And I again, want to pick one after the other, I want to take three elements, but let's say I uh, have the replacement. So when I pick an A, it doesn't, it doesn't vanish from the list. So I basically I take an A out, but there's also an A back in there. So I can pick an A again. Uh, if I want to model that I can use the combinations with replacement function. And then we get more stuff like AAA, AAB, AAC, and so on. So this is quite interesting. Again, I don't want to go here through all the functions because there's no value in a video where I basically show you the whole module. Um, first of all, you can just use auto completion to trigger them. You can see here we have chain, accumulate, uh, repeat and so on. Repeat is quite simple. Essentially, you have a value and you repeat it, for example, 50 times and this creates a generator that repeats a value 50 times. Um, but it is a quite interesting module that you can use. It's a very basic one. There's no reason to not use it because it's part of core Python, you don't even have to rely on external libraries. So whenever you do something where, where, where you have to iterate over something in a more advanced way where you want to do something with combinatorics, iter tools is a very nice library to use. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button, and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.